What is going on everybody? It's Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be looking at a two round NFL mock draft done by Pro Football Network. So if you guys are new, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube jazz. I saw a two rounder. Yeah, it's a week ago, whatever. The whole entire order hasn't changed. That's just the way it's going to be. But we're excited to look at this again. It's an awesome time because there's so many, <laughs> there's going to be so much variation because we haven't even seen these players play since last year and some of them we haven't seen really play at all so I'm so excited to be able to reference this in the future look back on it yada yada but again quick announcement you know uh down in the description below there's gonna be two new links one of them our buddy and friend of the show sub down in the comment section as well as in the discord Mark has been able to create a nice database for us big shout out to him he's been absolutely awesome doing that and you guys can reference that. I'm going to be referencing it when I do my mock drafts, looking at the average draft position of the players. So basically we could see, oh, well, you know, on average, I picked CJ Stroud fourth. And then at the end of the year, we'll see like maybe he gets up to one or maybe he goes down to 30. And then we could be like, wow, we like I can just reference back to that. So big fan of that. Big thank you to Mark there. And then also I, I'm going to – I'm committing pretty much uh social suicide by doing this but made a tiktok for the show and posted a video it's been doing pretty well and that's awesome so feel free to show some love there i did my top five teams in the nfl and i know damn well sure that none of you guys are going to agree with it because the team at number two is ridiculous it's based off of the record so for the not many people who have been following it you have a head start but i mean if you guys want to see why i have that crazy list Feel free to enjoy the videos. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Starting off with the number one overall pick. I don't really like the way that they titled this mock draft. Not exactly professional. Whatever. We're not fully professional here anyways. But, uh, you know, seeking a savior in CJ Stroud. I don't really think he's any better than Justin Fields. So I'm not really sure why there's this much hype on CJ. I still have him as a late one. He has a big arm, big body, but I mean, again, we're talking about Boston Fields. He's coming from the same school and the same similar offense where Justin Fields produced just as much. And we're talking about CJ Stroud, like he's the next best thing since sliced bread. I don't really get it. I see a lot of negative tape and, you know, I want him to prove me wrong and it has nothing to do with just pure Ohio State. I'm just saying it's the same system with a player who's performing worse than someone who's being a bust in the NFL. That's why I'm a little bit worried about. But again, if the Texans are at number one, I personally would be going a player like uh, Miles Murphy or, you know, obviously Will Anderson is in that mix as well. You have two first round picks and this is a deep QB class. I would personally do that because again, if it fails, the top of next year's class is awesome and a lot better than this one. We see that every year, but it has been true since the Trevor Lawrence draft. There just hasn't been top end quarterback. And well, the draft this last year showed that. So I'm not really a huge fan of CJ Stroud compared to the public. I'm not a hater of him. Again, I know some people who think he's a sixth rounder, um, maybe even worse. I don't. I have him as a late one. Again, I'm willing to take a shot, but definitely not at number one when there's a lot better players on the board. Falcons and Will Anderson, I fully support this. I know they have a lot of edge rushers right now as it is. Obviously, you have D'Angelo Malone, Arnold Ebiketti. Like you just got those two dudes in the last draft, but I would say going after Will Anderson is a great choice. And, you know, again, you can never get too good at a position like Ed Rusher. Like if you have five guys deep, that's awesome. Trade one away. There's some teams that really need it. Will Anderson is really special. He is my one B at edge, technically edge two, but he's a different style than my one A, which I have already mentioned. Detroit Lions going Bryce Young at number three. The real question, so obviously there needs to be context with what you do at number three. I think it's perfectly fine to go Bryce Young, but it really depends on how Jared Goff plays. Was it the defense that let him down and where it's like, dude, we, Jared Goff is not going to be able to put up 35 points a game. If that's the case, go to the defense. Continue building that out. Uh, there's top end corners here. Trade out and do that. Granted, there is no trades in this. So... I think it's the best value. I know our buddy, a uh, friend of the show, John, is going to be now in the comment section complaining about the quarterback. I don't, I don't disagree. I would just say if you have multiple firsts and, uh, you know, you do have a non-franchise level quarterback, it's never a bad thing. 
So that's where I'm at right there. You know, Bryce Young, I think it's kind of forcing him to go with Jamison Williams, which makes sense. But I am, I mean, it really needs context. Number four, the Jets go Paris Johnson Jr. tackle slash guard at Ohio State. I have him as a second rounder. I didn't really see very much power from him. Ohio State linemen just in general have, like, again, Ohio State is a very good system for a college player to look good in. It's not very good to project to the next level. Honestly, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, eh. I had a second round on Nicholas Petit Ferrer. You know, I think that Paris Johnson is kind of the exact opposite of Ferrer. Ferrer was very high and very low. Johnson was very consistently good enough. And I'm worried about him moving to tackle because I didn't think he was good enough to be a guard. Well, I wasn't, he's not first round to be a guard. I just didn't think he was like powerful enough to be a consistent guard. I hope he proves me wrong. I really do. I just highly doubt that a player who I think was as good as Nicholas Petit Ferrer is going to be in the top 10. Jaguars going Quentin Johnston. So this is the reason I started doing this is because I was like, okay, this is not your normal mock draft. Uh, Quentin Johnston here is he's a beast. He's a true wide receiver one mold. You know, he has, he's six foot four, 205 pounds. Uh, you know, he has unbelievable hands. He's good enough. He's fast enough. And he is, I think, wide receiver five or six for me, but that's not saying much because it's a very thin margin between wide receiver one and wide receiver seven. Like there's very little gap separating these guys. Quentin Johnson's probably one of the true number ones in the class. And similar to how George Pickens was this last year, you know, we, these X receiver builds don't exactly perform at the same level that let's just say a slot does or a Z. So I think that that's not a bad choice. Again, at number five, it's a bad choice, but I'm looking at the pick itself here. Wide receiver for the Jaguars obviously makes sense, but going wide receiver with Quentin Johnston here, who kind of probably lacks that physical upside, I would say a bit of a reach. And that's where I would trade back. Again, there's some really good edge rushers in this class, and that's where you can take advantage of teams that are desperate for an elite talent like that. Panthers going Jalen Carter here out of Georgia. I think that's great. I really do. Uh, again, you know, I think Miles Murphy's better. He's my number one player in the class, so I'm a little biased. But I think Jalen Carter here is a really damn good player. He's my number six in the entire draft. And the Panthers, honestly, if you don't feel comfortable with a quarterback and you don't think Anthony Richardson's your guy, go and continue building your team to where it's going to be great in the long run. And you did that with Iki Aquanu, who apparently got hit sticked last night by Kyle Duggar. So I'm excited to watch that. I have NFL Plus, I guess is working as a promotion for him. But, you know, um, apparently Iki got hit sticked. And I'm excited to watch the condensed version of that on there. Jazz going Will Levis. You guys know my thoughts. He's not in my top 50. I think that he's absolute cheeks. And I don't really think, well, absolute cheeks compared to the expectations. We I, I always have to caveat it with that, you know. I will say a guy's complete cheeks and still have a third round grade on him because it's like anti Brochmo here. We talk about this all the time. Like I look at the perception where I say someone's really good or someone's not good at all based off of what most people think. So if people are saying, Will Levis is a top 10 quarterback, I think he's complete cheeks, like awful. And that's a third round quarterback to me. Like if you can't be a starting level quarterback, get out. And I really don't think he can be. He's a strong arm dude who can't make big plays. He has 15 big time throws last year. Like, and he couldn't beat out um, Sean Clifford and he's old. Just, I don't see it. I don't see the love. It's a lot of people just hoping. Bears going JSN. If they're at number eight, which there's no way in hell they're going to be at number eight. I, for, I thoroughly believe they're going to be number one. Them or the Jets. Those two teams, I thoroughly believe are going to be number one. But the Bears getting JSN at this spot, I don't really see the upside again, but I do think that'd be a solid fit. I think you need to give a reliable target to Justin Fields. And as much as I, again, I'm an Ohio State fan. I've crapped on three Ohio State players here, but I'm an Ohio State fan. I'm not biased. I tell you guys this. Like I'm, a, I'm biased towards a good talent, not to a team. So uh, yeah, JSN, I have a late first on him as well. He's a good player. I think he's great for the Bears. You Sometimes it's okay to get a worse player overall to get someone who's just going to be nice, solid, and consistent. I would do um, a mock the mock then what for this, but one, there's no real place where I'm not going to do a different mock draft simulator for one, but number two, 
uh, going to the third round, you're starting to stretch on the players we're going after. And none of us are prepared for that at that moment. At this moment, we need to have a little bit more time to watch these guys before doing something crazy like that. Oh, wait, Brosh, Ro and I are going to be doing, I believe, a three rounder. There's a potential chance. Don't quote me on it, but we're doing a mock. I just don't know if it's three rounds or not. So stay tuned for that for his show. Uh, Seahawks going Noah Sewell here. He's my only linebacker worth a first round pick. I don't know if he's even worth a top 20 pick. And with all due respect, he has a really bad missed tackle rate. And again, the Seahawks are trying to replace Bobby Wagner. Don't do it with a number nine overall pick. Again, linebacker is one of the lower value positions in the NFL. There's teams like the Rams that are winning the Super Bowl with like essentially nobody there. Now they have Bobby Wagner, but like back when they won. Again, it's not a valuable position. Go quarterback, go wide receiver, go corner. I'm not saying for them, but just in general, go quarterback, wide receiver, corner, edge. If you have a top 10 pick, make it worth it. Unless it's a crazy player like Jalen Carter. By the way, guys, sponsor of the show, Olipop. I don't shout him out very often because I know you guys probably aren't in the market for it. But I buy this on my own, especially if you see it at Whole Foods and you know they have it on sale. Ooh, man, that's a good deal. But besides that, my deal is probably the best that you would get. 15% off Hail Mary down in the description below. I literally bought 30 of these. I'm not even joking. I could swear on my life. I have bought, I've drank over like probably 200 of these in my life. Some people are going to say it's crap. I think it's phenomenal, especially the root beer, primarily the root beer. And they had a Minions banana cream one that I actually have back there. So pretty cool. Just saying. Uh, number 10, Washington Commanders, Michael Meyer. I don't see physical upside from him. That's the last thing I would do if I'm sitting there at number 10 is grabbing another low end position. Uh, again, Isaiah likely is balling out fifth round pick, you know, spending a top 10 pick on a dude who's not a physical freak. If it's Eric Gilbert, at least he's a physical freak. So we're going to show some love here. It's my favorite root beer, man. I'm telling you as unbiased opinion too, but yeah, I think that that'd be an awful selection. Steelers game, Miles Murphy. Uh, take off the one right here, and that's where he's at in the class to me. Number one, guy's a phenomenal monster as, as an edge rusher. And, you know, if the Steelers get him, I'm going to cry. He's such a beast. I mean, apparently he has a vertical of 35 and clocked in the hole. Oh my, I did not know that. So my big issue was that he's not a super freak elite athlete Um, in terms of just, like, scoring 9 out of 10. I scored him, like, 7 out of 10, where 5 out of 10 is average. He's a superior athlete but if he clocks in the four fives at at his weight at 285 pounds i am literally going to cry tears of joy but holy crap so this is again why you have to read all this stuff it's fun it's the stuff when you're listen, you're like learning from 500 players you know being able to see and stuff like that isn't exactly readily available but awesome great stuff makes me love him even more Keely Ringo, Philadelphia Eagles. I think that's a great option. I think it'd be a great fit right there. Breezy, I have a third round grade on him. Also, I don't really have the Eagles here. And the reason I'm doing this series where I'm doing the um, the deep dives is because I'm actually going to be ranking the teams and mock drafts in the future with that. Like before the season really gets deep, I'm going to actually have that be their record prediction. Like the record prediction is going to be how I formulate the um the mock drafts so it just makes a fun draft order we'll see how the draft order is in comparison at the end of the year compared to that it's just fun stuff but yeah brian Breesy, i thought he was lazy i thought he was low uh low ceiling honestly like he didn't really flash and again like what the hell i know they're talking about oh the hargrave and cox are out like they have milton williams in there it's a little bit lighter they have marlon to they have a lot of really good players on the interior and they have Jordan Davis. You know, to be honest, I think this need for interior defensive line is absolute cheeks for the Eagles. And it's just cheap journalism. You know, I feel like it's just like, oh, we need to slot in Brian Breesy sometime in this draft. So the Eagles are a great spot. Um, don't don't look at my original mock draft. To be fair, it was before Jordan Davis. So I put I put Breesy to the Eagles in my first uh, mock draft. But that was pre-NFL draft. So, yeah, I think it's just cheap journalism. He hasn't had the ceiling. I actually have Tyler Davis, uh, the interior defensive lineman from Clemson, who's right next to him, above him grade-wise. I'm just saying, I don't really trust it. I don't believe in him. That's just the way it is. Patriots going Cam Smith here. Definitely seems like a Patriots move. He just missed my top 11 DBs. 
Uh, and he's really good. I have a second round grade on him. That's how good the DBs are. This is a top end DB class. I love them. Uh, Vegas Raiders going Bijan Robinson. I could definitely see it. It's a really good player. Um, that's going to be taking a heavy boatload of the offense and the offensive line's not that good in this class. So I think that that's not a bad move. I'd go tackle here, honestly, with Broderick Jones and just say, Hey, we're going to keep throwing first round picks at right tackle until we exhaust ourselves. Uh, but yeah, I mean, again, that was me who I hated Alex Leatherwood as a tackle. I had like a third or a fourth on him as a tackle second as a guard. So I gave that pick an F. It obviously turned out to be that way. So hopefully they don't make that same mistake again. You got the Titans here, Trent Simpson. I, he's a really athletic linebacker, but I don't really think he's even worth it. Again, low value position, not a very good player. This is an awful class. Free agency for linebackers might be very, very good. Number 17, you got the Colts going Broderick Jones. Uh, I will say this. I'm pretty sure he's playing right tackle. So I would go after a true left and Anton Harrison. I like the idea of going tackle here, so I'm not going to tear apart uh, whoever wrote this, but, you know, I think that it's a little, yeah. So talking about the left tackle is far from resolved. Yeah. I think I, I'm pretty sure that it's a little bit of poor research, which I suffer from that from time to time. I mess up. I slip up. Uh, so again, so I support the offensive line pick. Roderick Jones, if I'm not mistaken, is a right tackle. So there's no real need to, Take him there. He might be a left tackle. The more I'm thinking about it, I think he was a hybrid because I think he took reps when um, I'm bugging. He went to the Chargers. I'm tripping. But the Jamari Sawyer went to guard. Besides that, uh, Vikings going Kajon Butte. Holy shit. They don't need to get any more explosive. Uh, they already have a really, I mean, to be fair, I said their wide receiver three was their weakest spot. And you do win by having a lot of wide receivers that are uncoverable. I'd fully support it. I think it'd be baller. So that's great. You know, Cardinals going Emmanuel Forbes. He's a good corner. Don't think he's among the top of the class. I think he might be, he might have ranked probably like 13 or something. Haven't done my official grade on him, but again, I didn't really like, you know, it. It's like I'm a little bit concerned about his weight. He Mississippi State's a good team, though. They they make some really good corners. I was a big fan of the guys on the Browns. I'm bugging on his name now too. Martin Emerson. But hey. We got to speed this up a little bit. Baltimore Ravens, Jordan Addison, absolutely poor pick because they just got rid of Jordan Addison. Um, again, like they just got rid of someone who's exactly like that in Marquise Hollywood Brown. That might be my comp for Jordan Addison. I just don't really see the need to continue putting small receivers around Lamar, who obviously thrives with larger receivers. I just don't get it. You know, you do have some larger receivers in this draft. I think that's where you should take them. Antonio Johnson, safety out of Texas A&M. So I actually really like this because you can use Dax Hill in the slot. You can use him as a free, but you can use Johnson in the slot boundary or as a strong, and he is so good. I have him, I think, at number nine on my board. Really big fan of that guy. Texans going Isaiah Foskey. I don't like him. I really don't. I think Darrell Shami is the better version. I don't see the upside. He's a physical freak. Awesome. But I really, I think he'll end up being in the first round when all is said and done. I just don't see it. And we'll see if my eyes are really that reliable when it comes to Foskey, because I didn't like him last year and I didn't like him this year either. Cowboys going Josh Downs. Uh, I think that'd be fine. Honestly, you add a nice weapon in the slot. You know, you free up some range there. I have a second round grade on Josh Downs. So definitely a good player. Good player. Uh, Chargers going Darnell Wright. I don't know enough about him to make an official claim, but... I wasn't a big fan of Tennessee's O-line last year. And if I'm not mistaken, the right tackle was Cade Mays. So um, I might be tripping up on that because Cade Mays actually ended up being like a guard prospect. But if that's the case, you don't want to see, like unless Darnell's moving to right tackle, you don't want to draft another left tackle and just pray he can move to right. We'll see about that though. The Seahawks going Anthony Richardson. That's what I would do with their first round, uh, their first first. So I think that's amazing. Good pick for them. Uh, Dolphins going Nolan Smith here. Another player. I just don't see it. Amazing motor. An amazing person like that you see on the field. Someone who could probably inspire others. But I just don't see anything except, hey, I'm going to be able to run around you. I don't see enough um, of it anywhere else. And that's just not good. If you can't actually get to the passer, which these tackles are getting more athletic and more technically savvy, the more you go up. 
uh, it's not good. Packers going Matthew Bergeron. Don't know enough about Bergeron, but I've heard some good things. Again, going offensive line is never a bad thing. I think it's a reach. Justin Flo. Uh, pretty sure this guy's played like absolutely no reps at all. <laughs> but uh, Justin Flo is a good player. He is. There's just not enough tape on him. Uh, Chiefs going Felix Anu DK Uzama. That's how you were supposed to say it, if I'm not mistaken. I don't really like him very much. I know a lot of people are big fans of him. Put up really good numbers, but he just he doesn't look explosive to me. He looks like a guy who's a really good depth piece, which probably the Chiefs would end up getting. Somehow they got a top, I think, five player for me. I don't know where I put Carl Loftus in my top 10, but Carl Loftus is balling out. So I'm a fan of guys who are bigger. He just doesn't have the pop. He just doesn't to me. Buccaneers, Tyler Van Dyke. I think that'd be phenomenal. He's used to playing there down in Florida. Amazing. It's just an amazing pick right there. Skoronsky to the Bills. Interesting. So I think they'd be putting him as a guard. And I think I would really like that because he can sub in at tackle. That would be actually a big fan of this pick. I think Skoronsky deserves to have a chance over there in Buffalo. Big fan of that. Obviously, Dolphins missed their first round pick. Well, not missed it. They lost it uh, with the tampering. Texans going Zay Flowers. I think that'd be really fun. I have a very high grade on Zay Flowers. I think he might be wide receiver three or five. He might be five for me. Uh, he's up there. He's in the he's in a very solid range for me. Second round worthy. So getting another weapon, not too shabby at all. Blake Freeland to the Falcons. I think he needs a lot of development. A team like the Falcons, I'd want a more pro ready offensive tackle than Blake. So I'd be going away from there. Lions going Clark Phillips. I, I don't know if you really need to put a slot in round two. I have a first round grade on Phillips. I think he can play boundary. He's just really light, really thin. So I also think he's much better in zone than in man. And I don't know how much the Lions are running zone at the moment, but based on the players that they have on the roster, I would rather run a more man heavy scheme. Clark Phillips is not your guy for that. Uh, Texas or Jets, wow, are going Henry Teo Teo. I think that's a great move. Again, now you have CJ Mosley, and uh, I'm tripping up on the other guy. I think it's Quan Alexander. You need some more youth in there, and Henry Teo Teo would be a great pick. I'm a big fan of that. Jaguars going Siaki Ika. I have, I think, a fourth round grade on him. He's just really unathletic. He shows some pop, but if you can't get to the quarterback, it doesn't matter how many like blocks you're going to shed. Again, if you're not fast enough to make a difference, again, it just doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what you do if you just can't get there. And he's just too out of shape for me. I'm not a big fan of that. Cam Ward, here we go. Uh, where did he come from? Incarnate Ward. Yeah, so he put up insane stats. But his mechanics are really poor. I haven't been able to go and watch him in depth yet. But I'm not that high on him. But we'll have to see. A lot of people really like him. Giants going Eli Ricks. I think that would be very solid, especially if they're going to – I mean – the more actually, I'm going to counter that. Uh, so obviously, you have the Ravens DC now in your squad. So you're going to be more man heavy, which I think would be a great idea. Eli Ricks is not in that Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters role. He is not at all. He's a very good zone corner, zone only. He's not very good in man. He's not athletic enough. So I think this would be actually a good pick at cornerback, just the wrong player. I think that'd be an excellent move for them to go corner. But I would go after someone like Jalen Jones. I would like to go after someone. I mean, even Joey Porter is his own specific corner. But I'd probably probably want to go around that. Chicago Bears, Jalen Duncan. Again, building the offensive lines, which you're going to have to do. I'm not that big of a fan of Duncan to put him in the third or put him at, in the 30s. But I can't really complain. I can't. Uh, Seahawks going with Cyrus Torrance. I think that's an amazing, amazing fit. Again, really powerful guard, can help in the run game. I think that's a great fit for them. Commanders going Brandon Joseph. You're continuing to help that secondary out with a guy with an extremely high ceiling. I have, I think, a fifth-round grade on him, and that's after putting him at number five overall last year. Uh, just he looked spatially unaware. We'll see if it randomly pops back, and maybe it was just some amnesia they had back then. But, uh, yeah, not a fan of Brandon Joseph at the moment. But this pick, I could totally see it paying off. So I like it. Steelers going after another safety. Yeah, I like JL Skinner and all, but I don't think the Steelers need to go after a safety. We're really good at maximizing 
like having one highly paid one and one that's kind of a good support guy. I don't think safety is the issue. I think going after a corner would be a better choice. Uh, Jordan Battle to the Saints, I have a fourth on him. He's kind of just a jack of all trades, master of none, and really not that great in anything. So I don't really think that brings that much to the table because you already have Mar- uh, Tyron Matthew and Marcus May. I think those two guys would be better to have in that equation than to try to bring in Jordan Battle and add that nice extra dynamic. Eagles going BJ Ojolari, I think an edge is very possible for the Eagles. I think that'd be a great move. Uh, Ivan Pace Jr., linebacker in Cincinnati. I don't know if Ivan Pace is really worth it at this point, but we'll see. We'll see if he takes that step up because Darian Beavers was better than him. Raiders going Anton Harrison. There we go. I talked about it earlier, and here it is. He's a left, he's a left tackle, but honestly, it's better than anything that you have. So putting him to right tackle might be a good move. Sean Tucker to the Dolphins. Again, I like spending a second and not a first on running back. So I can support this for sure. But again, I would probably try to go and maybe try to get a right tackle. There's just no one on the board. So I do think it's the best pick at the moment. Cam Law 2 is not going to be a second round pick. I feel like you're running out of players at this point. But um, if you want to go tight end, go Sam Laporta, go Eric Gilbert, like just better guys. So uh, Colts going Andre Carter. Yeah, there we go. I have a top 15 grade on this guy. He's a beast. Freak athlete at 6'7", 260. You know, this guy's going to be an absolute menace. And he just, he's scheme specific. So I could see him really going in this range. But my God, he's worth a top 15. I haven't actually studied John Michael Schmitz yet enough, but I'm not a fan of Minnesota's O-line in general. Not talked about the Vikings, but I do think going after interior offensive line, especially a center, is not a bad move. Uh, Cardinals going Gravon Dexter, first round grade on him. He's a beast, and I think this team could certainly use that boost. Colby Wooden, I think, garnered a third round pick from me, so I think that's a great move. I don't know why they say D tackle. He's 285 pounds. I think he should be interior. He should be a flex. Should be a hybrid player. I don't feel that he fits the Ravens very well, but. He's a good player nonetheless. Layden Robinson to the Bengals, solid depth piece that will probably eventually become a starter. No way in hell Kalija Kansi is in this range. I'm sorry, this guy's 285 pounds that they use as a nose tackle. Like he's totally misutilized and he does not fit the Browns any better. I'm sorry. Uh, I just, I don't get it. Um, Cowboys going Malachi Moore. He's kind of, a, he's a slot corner who's really good at man. Um, actually, I'm trying to think. He might be actually better in zone. I think he was better in zone. I'll have to check my notes. But I think that Brian Branch is way better as a defensive back for the Cowboys than Malachi Moore. Uh, Chargers going DeMarvion Overshone. Feels like a Chargers pick, just choosing a shitty linebacker. Uh, no disrespect to DeMarvion, but he's like 217 pounds, and that's just not a linebacker. It's called a safety. Seahawks going Tyree Wilson. We've seen a lot of goodies from about this guy. So um, he's a fifth-year senior interesting like i don't really understand why people are trying to hype this guy up too much so apparently he's really explosive we'll see i'll do it i'll do some edge looks at him and honestly i might start doing some player tape uh evals on tiktok we'll see about that uh Vor, he's my number one offensive lineman in the class we'll see if he, we can bring him on the show i think that'd be a great fit all right catalan to the packers i love that as well ztf to the rams my god now we're hitting stride here you know, his ETF is fun. Really good player. I have first round grade on him. Jaheim Bell for the Chiefs, especially with the way they use tight ends. I think that's a great move. Uh, Tyreek Stevenson, happy to see some representation in here. Excellent player. Big fan of Tyreek. I have a first round grade on him. Great in man. He fits Tampa perfectly. Taking two guys from the U as well. And then Bills going Ruga or, 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 or ho. holy crap. How do we say this? Or her, 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 her. No, no, we, we said it wrong. Or horror, oh, God. <laughs> or horror, or ho. There we go. Oro, or horror. Oh my God. It is a tongue twister. I can't wait to hear Broshma talk about this guy. Rook O from Clemson. Haven't seen him play. Uh, <laughs> all of that for no, for nothing. So uh, let me know what you guys think. I actually didn't really like this draft very much. There was a lot of misses, but honestly, we're, at, we're so early. It's just fun to theorize and see what happens. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the far side. Peace.